しいね。This is how it feels like playing against Ruby. Hello my friend. Today I'm going to show you the adorable life seal queen, Ruby. First we are diving deep into the information heavy part, where I explain you everything you need to know about her, and afterwards we will continue with the match plan for her. In this match plan, we will go through all stages of any match, so you know exactly how to play her, and just having the best time you feel like with this little cutie. Now, buckle up your seatbelt and take out your notebook, I will throw a lot of information now at you. We start with our puzzle. Ruby jumps into any direction after using a skill, and gains physical and magic defense. This effect can stack up to 3 times. She also has a 10% physical lifesteal by default, and gets 150% physical lifesteal from equipment. Importantly, all of her physical lifesteal is converted into spellbound. As a quick note, if you don't know what physical lifesteal and spellbound means, you get a certain amount of HP back when dealing damage to an enemy. The more lifesteal you have, the more HP you get back. The difference between these two are that physical lifesteal comes from basic attacks, while spell them comes from using skills. And since all physical lifesteal is converted, you get only HP back when dealing damage with skills. This is super important to know, so when you want to heal, avoid using your basic attacks. Enemies are by the way everything you can deal damage to, including minions and jungle creeps. Next is her first skill. Ruby slashes forward and deals damage twice. The first part of her damage is directly in front of her, while the second one comes from the wave. She is also slowing down enemies when hitting them. This skill is super awesome, because you can do everything with it. Engage, escape and hunt down your enemies. It's all possible with it. Let's continue with her second skill. Ruby spins around beautifully, dealing damage to all targets twice and stun them briefly. She is also pulling them slowly towards her. This skill is awesome to stun anyone who is coming near to you. You are also able to cancel enemies abilities with it. A good example is to cancel Guinevere's knockup effect. When she hit you with her jump and is about to knock you up, you can use your second skill to cancel it and leave her with no other chance than to retreat. If you let her retreat of course. Because this you can easily deny with your ultimate. She pulls all enemies towards her and stun them briefly. What doesn't sound that particular can make a huge difference in any gank. Once you pull them together, all heroes with a lot of AoE damage will have the best time of their life. This skill is also super awesome if you use it together with Flicker. Similar to Franco's hook, you can pull your enemies into your tower and continue to stun them and slow them down. Your enemies will hate you for this. What is the best thing that can happen to you? That's all her skills. Let's continue with her spells, emblem and build. You should use Flicker as a spell. Let alone for the Flicker ult combo, it's worth it 100%. But in the case that you haven't unlocked Flicker yet, you can also use Execute, Sprint or Petrify. As emblem I like to use the Fighter Emblem with the talent Festival of Blood to further suck out the blood of your enemy. But you could also use the tank or assassin emblem. Now to our build. This build is designed in the way that you can spam all your skills in the late game and gain as much spell vamp as possible. As boots use either warrior boots for physical defense, tough boots for magic defense or magic shoes for cooldown reduction. There are three core items in my opinion. Harsh claws, endless battles and bloodless axe. Harsh claws increase your physical lifesteal and gives you more physical attack. Endless battle gives you more lifesteal and physical attack as well and also more HP, mana regeneration and a bit more movement speed. Once you have built it, you should add a basic attack in between your skills to activate the true damage of the passive. Bloodlust X again increases your physical lifesteal and physical attack and gives you another cooldown reduction. As last two items, I like to build Oracle to increase the HP regeneration effect and for the cooldown reduction and Queen Swings for another cooldown reduction and the passive, which increases your lifesteal and physical defense once your HP is low. With this build you can spam around her skills endlessly and stun the enemies forever. You could also add immortality for an extra life and physical defense, blade of despair for more physical attack and Athena's shield against one shot mages. Before we get into the match plan, let's talk quickly about her targets and counters. Every enemy has HP, so they can be all your targets, but you should still aim your stuns on the damage dealers. You can pick her as counter against Fanny, Ling, Gushin, Odette, Farsa and heroes with low mobility. Fanny and Ling are quick, but you can catch them with your second skill or your ultimate if you're really good. Odette and Farsa are easy to counter because you can interrupt their ults what makes them useless. She is also super strong against heroes with low mobility because they can't escape you. And last let's talk about how you can get countered, so you are also aware of that. One way to counter Ruby is using Seer Halberd or Necklace of Durants. It reduces the HP regeneration effect by 50%. 
You will also have difficulties against long range heroes. They can shoot you from a far distance and there's not much you can do except running away. Whew. But there were a lot of informations. I hope you could keep up with all of them. If you found this information helpful, I would really appreciate if you leave a like on the video. It would really help me out a lot. Thank you very much. Love ya. Now it's time for the match plan, where you're going to learn how to actually execute everything you just learned. Your first priorities become level 4. Without their ult, you are quite weak compared to other heroes on the XP lane. So stay near your tower and just farm the minions without getting in trouble. Once you are level 4, you can start to be more aggressive. Try to bring the enemy's HP down to about 40% and then use your full skill set on him. He will be most likely dead otherwise. Just make sure to check the map before, so you're not ending up in the 1 vs 3 situation. If you manage to kill your enemy, or at least make him retreat, get some nice golden honey from the tower. Don't forget to pull your enemies into your tower, whenever they are careless enough to come near to it. Keep an eye on the mid lane and the turtle when it's on your side. After cleaning the minion wave, you are free to rotate and help your teammates. Just don't risk too much. You don't want to give away the nice advantage by laying down in the dirt. If multiple enemies are coming to your lane, request help and stay in your tower. Focus on killing the minions, so your enemies cannot push a lane. You can also combine the last hit on the minions with your ult. When you reach the mid game and the gank start, you should be always in the middle of it. Together with your tank, you can stun and poke the enemy endlessly, and your damage dealer can finish them off. Ruby herself is not made for getting kills, but you will have a ton of supports after the match, which is also very nice. It's okay by the way when you die at this point, if your team for example managed to kill 3 enemies. That's a good trade, and your team can push the lanes. This is in general something more players should be aware of. Making good trades can really help you to win many more games. You should always look for opportunities to pull a single enemy near your team or into a tower. They have no chance of surviving and your team can get a nice gold advantage out of it. When you reach the late game, you should be a bit more careful again. The enemy's damage dealer will have more and more damage, so it becomes easier to kill you before you even get near to them. If your team falls behind, you should switch to a more tanky build, so you can sustain more and not getting one-shotted. I think you should focus on ending the game as soon as possible, so you're not getting into this trouble. Like this you should be able to defeat any enemy. Unless you lost again, because of your teammates who were feeding again this mother Sorry, I didn't know where this came from. Anyway, that's a game plan. It's not too complicated I think, and very effective. Thank you very much for watching the whole guide. Check out the Hunter Counter X playlist to learn how to counter each hero and make your enemies cry. See you over there.